Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook live stream. I am Emmy Grimes. I'm an educator and advisor here at Synergy Medical Group. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have our amazing Dr. Chase um, with us today. He's going to be talking about structure benefits and how they affect our bodies. But before we do that, we're going to talk to you briefly just about a few housekeeping things to discuss. The, um, first things first, we are going to be recording this, guys. So if there's anything that happens on your end with technology or you're having to drop off early, do not worry. We are going to be recording this so that you'll be able to get a link over the weekend and be able to reaccess this and send it on to your friends, too. We encourage you to do that because it's great information that we love to share with you. Additionally, if you're new here, Welcome. Thank you for being a part of our live stream. We send out a weekly newsletter where it sends you the latest and greatest information about what we're all about and, you know, learning and giving you the best information as possible to keep you healthy. This is a link here in this message below and our comments below. You can click here where you can get these newsletters, but you can also visit our website at www.synergy.us and click on get more information. And from there, you'll be able to receive our newsletters. Additionally, guys, we love hearing from you and want to be able to answer questions along the way. So bring your questions in hands, put them in our comments below. We'll be answering some questions at the end of this stream. Just a reminder, we can't give any medical advice, but no, we want to bring you the most effective information as possible. Guys, we have Dr. Chase with us here today. He is going to be discussing again, structure benefits. And without further ado, please welcome Dr. Chase Falmo. Thank you so much, Emmy. Happy to be with you all this Friday. Thank you, Chase. So guys, I want to kind of talk to you about a few points that I think is going to be important. And Chase, will you talk first, you know, uh, about why is posture important to an, to everyday, you know, an everyday person? You know, why is that so important for us? Fantastic question. So we know that posture is important for general health and wellness. You know, when we have better posture, we're going to have better joint health, muscle health, bone health. But as well, when you have good posture, it helps for everyday things, athletic performance. Uh, let's take an example of uh, someone going into a job interview. If someone goes into a job interview or a business deal and they're all slumped over, you may not have, they may not show confidence. But someone going into a business interview or job search, they go in with confidence, then people are going to look at them more favorably. And not only that, they actually had interesting research that they studied what makes people attractive. And it wasn't the, wasn't the hair, the clothes. The common denominator that they found that people found most attractive was actually good posture. Interesting. That's really fascinating. I mean, so true. So another point I want to bring up is what are some things that you do to help influence the body to have better posture? Oh, that's a great question. So we know that the body works through voltage. So on our muscles, this covering of our muscles, we have this stuff called fascia. Okay. Fascia is that stuff you see whenever you you know, carve a Thanksgiving turkey or rotisserie chicken, it's this si shiny layer of tissue. So it's not only on the chickens or the turkeys, it's on us as well. And it's one of the ways voltage travels through the body. So in healing is voltage, we learn a little bit about the muscle battery packs. So if you scroll in here, I'm going to show you a little picture here. This is what's called the stomach circuit. All these muscles that are highlighted, all these muscles are covered by the same fascia. So whenever we have enough voltage in the body, these muscles are going to have perfect tone. That means they're not going to be too tight or too loose. So these muscles act like walls for our bones and our spine and our joints. You want each of these muscles firing properly so that everything's in balance in their correct positioning. They actually did a study and they found that a lot of people get knots in their muscles, right? Those painful things you press in the muscle, it hurts, or if you move a certain way, it hurts. Yes. Knots are what they call trigger points. 
And when they actually studied these trigger points, they found that trigger points are low oxygen parts of the body. And what we know is that when they have low oxygen, there's going to be low voltage. So whenever we're looking at posture, it's important we look at voltage. So I already showed you the stomach circuit. If someone's got low voltage in the stomach circuit here, if you look right here at the knees, this muscle forms that wall for the knee. I find an example of posture and structure is that I find people who have had ACL tears usually have low voltage in the stomach circuit, weakening this muscle so that you're more likely to have an injury there. Another example I can show you is on the bladder circuit. A lot of people get back pain, and if you look at these muscles highlighted here, all these muscles highlighted are on the bladder circuit. So whenever the voltage is low in the bladder circuit, it's very common for people to have back pain. So that's what makes voltage so important. And we talked about fascia as well. Again, that's the way voltage travels through the body. So one of the things that I can do to help accelerate the healing process, those trigger points I talked about, those are where the fascia gets torqued. So there are certain what's called myofascial releases you can do where you do kind of massage soft tissue work to help accelerate that healing process. So another thing that can influence uh, body's posture in joint positioning is adjustments or mobilizations. So when we have a joint and a joint's not getting as much movement as it should, it's going to create pain and inflammation. There are ways you can make the joint have a better range of motion through adjustments or mobilizations. And a common misconception is that adjustment has to be something that's aggressive. And there's nothing farther from the truth. Adjustments can be aggressive, but there's also very gentle ways to help move joints in their proper positioning. Um, while I am trained in the aggressive method, I also can use instruments or use simple things like gravity to help joints get in their proper positioning. We know from the research that when a joint does not have a full range of motion, when there's not enough movement in a joint, after one month of that lack of movement, the degeneration and weakness of that joint begins. So you want to make sure every month your joint gets some kind of movement, you know, whether it's through adjustments, mobilizations, exercises, stretches. There's multiple ways to help get the, get the joints moving. So that brings us to another point, too, is one of the things that influences posture is what's called our autonomic nervous system. So there is a part of our nervous system called the autonomic nervous system, and there are two different parts of it. There's your sympathetic nervous system. That's known as your fight or flight system in your body. In the world and the age we live in, we have a lot of stress, you know, emotional, physical. What happens is we get in this sympathetic on mode. When we get in the sympathetic on mode, our bodies want to fight or fly. When our bodies do that, they twist and they bend forward and it takes us out of good postural alignment. Uh, some people call it uh, autonomic dysfunction or some people also call it the bowling ball syndrome. So what we want to be in is something called parasympathetic on mode. Our parasympathetic part of our nervous system is our part of our ner nervous system that helps us rest and digest. When our body is in that state, our body can fully relax and have good posture. Mm -hmm. The cool part is you can use the biomodulator to do an autonomic reset to help take you out of that sympathetic mode into a parasympathetic mode so that your body can rest and digest. And you can see some of the uh, work done in the book Healing is Voltage. There's a doctor in Kuwait. Um, he was able to do x-ray imaging before doing an autonomic reset with the biomodulator and after. And he found that it actually helped even out the ears, shoulders, just amazing results you'll have to check out. 
So another part that people don't often know about when it comes to posture is our brains play a huge role into that. The brain, two lobes of the brain help tell your body where it is in space. So the cerebellum, it's known as the cerebellum, they call it the little brain. That tells your body where it is in space from the side and backwards. And then your frontal lobe, that tells your body where it is in space from the side and forward. So oftentimes, you know, these lobes of the brain can kind of get out of sync, whether it be from a, a trauma, a concussion, there's multiple things that can do it. When these lobes are out of sync, your brain doesn't always know where your body is in space. The cool part is there's ways to test to see if your body knows, if your brain knows where your body is in space. And we can use the biomodulator in the transducer to run frequencies in that brain that are specific to those lobes so that it helps the brain know where it is in space, the, helps the brain know where the body is in space. And I see it work every single time. And another thing you have to look at when you look at posture is there are something called the perinatal reflexes. And some people classically call them the um, primitive reflex or postural reflexes. So when our bodies are first born, when we're babies, we have these certain reflexes in our body. And these reflexes are a good thing because they help protect our body, but they also help our bodies learn and grow. And as we grow and mature over time, these reflexes get stored as memory in our system and shouldn't be showing up like when we're adults. So we're kind of like a tadpole when we're first born, okay? When a tadpole becomes a frog, the frog has to lose its tail like when it was a tadpole, otherwise it can't jump. It's the exact same thing with these perinatal reflexes. So sometimes these reflexes don't get properly stored in our nervous systems like they should. And so they continue through adolescence and adulthood. And sometimes these reflexes come back out when we're adults through some kind of, again, a concussion, trauma, or a PTSD-like event. So an example, maybe several examples, one of the reflexes is called the tendon guard reflex. If someone pushes your body a certain way and you have this reflex, Still, your legs and your feet will tighten up, which will affect your structure and your posture, and often a common cause of plantar fasciitis or foot pain at the bottom of your foot. So whenever these reflexes are on, they create these things called adnas, or another, they're known as areas of diffuse neural activation. What's cool is that there are ways you can check someone for this reflex, and then you can see how their brain and spinal cord react to it or overheat, and then you can correct it right there on the spot. And it's the permanent fix. The only thing that can bring them back out again is uh, some kind of concussion, trauma, or PTSD. So again, I know I went through a long list, but the big picture is for you to have good postural and structural health, you need the voltage working. You want the fascia working at those knots or trigger points gone. You want the joints moving. You can do that through adjustments, mobilization, stretching. You want your autonomic nervous system working, which you can accomplish using the biomodulator. You want your brain to know where your body is in space. And you want to correct these perinatal reflexes since they can, little stimulation can cause the system to freeze up. So once you release that, things can hold for a lot longer regarding your posture and joint movement. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, yeah, balancing the autonomic nervous system in general, that's just so, so important to know, Tick, because it really can affect our bodies so greatly. So thank you for sharing that. Last thing I wanted to ask you about was, what is the lymphatic system? Because I think that's important to notate as well. And, and how does that affect our body? Ah, very good question. So. I think about the lymphatic system, they, they call it the second circulatory system. 
It's kind of like the sewage system of our bodies. It takes toxins out of our joints and various tissues and it helps move them so that the body can release them. So another important part and what I found is that one of the things that I've been able to do is do something called a fascial lymphatic release. So when we think about this lymphatic system, I think of it like a freeway. So here in Dallas area, for those who are familiar, one of the heaviest traffic areas is a highway called I-75 or I-75. Whenever you think about there being major traffic on a freeway, the roads going into it are going to be stopped up too, right? Mm -hmm. And it's also going to stop up the roads connecting to those roads. So for us to get that traffic going, we want that main highway where the main traffic jam is to start moving. The body's lymphatic system is the exact same way. So you can release certain muscles. You can do fascia work and release some of those knots in the muscles. And you do them in certain orders, um, like, what, like what I do at the clinic, and it can help move that lymphatic system so that the whole lymphatic system moves from head to toe. Again, very important part of the body. You want, you don't want toxins to accumulate. That's why you want that lymphatic system moving so that they properly get eliminated. 